Good morning. Sort of around ten past seven this morning. Um, not in a very good mood. The North California blues, I think, has got hold of us well and truly. I mean, you know, we're surrounded by beauty and drawing very little enjoyment from it at the moment. In order to finish this hike, we'll have to walk at a pace that we don't enjoy. We're currently too stubborn to quit, but I think it's coming. Because what's the point of hiking when you don't enjoy it, right? Another piece of equipment break as well. Nothing essential, but something that was giving us some enjoyment, so... It's becoming an exercise of throwing money into a pit just so we can say, hey, we didn't quit, and it's like, kind of a pointless exercise. Well, this is a pretty little, whatever, meadow, whatever you want to call it, in between the trees. There's a lot of really lovely flowers out at the moment. Just small, really small, like, you know. Nothing picking in your face, but I like small flowers. We just had a truck come past spraying the road to keep the dust down. You wouldn't know now, I would have gone in front of it. <laughs> just filled up with water at the Moosehead Creek um, spring thing, whatever, <laughs> which is apparently the last on-trail water for 10 miles. Which is, yeah, it is what it is. I'm glad we've got our bladder back so that we can build up a reservoir for these things because at the moment in these temperatures we do drink rather a lot. I don't know, it looks beautiful and shady, doesn't it? And it is beautiful and shady, but the spots where the shade ends still drain you. <laughs> This is pretty. Again, the flowers make so much difference. It's all these dots of yellow and pink and well, around here it's just yellow and pink. Sometimes there's white. <laughs> Big folk territory. territory. Look at all the, the this is bizarre. This is particularly bizarre. But look at that. All these trees are like bent uphill. And some of them, yeah, some are a bit splintered, but like this one. Perfectly fine. It's like they, they just yeah, grow in that foot, direction. That's definitely Bigfoot. Making little bends. We've seen the evidence. This tree is about. This is definitely Bigfoot. And some of the little ones that have been done is done by little foot. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, rich walking in this section. This is quite a nice one. A lot of it is, is um, on, on sand, so, or very loose soil. It's a bit like it was in the desert where you kind of. <laughs> you know, we've been going on about the snow traverses and how much they worry us. Well, the sand traverses are actually no easier. Plus, you have no micro spikes to help you. What a viewpoint. Yes, it's that mountain again. Yes, it's and that scarsa. It's that scarsa again. We were looking at this from a distance, thinking, it can it be, can it be? Yep, snow. Not on the trail, so thankfully. And there's the other side of the hill we've been climbing. I'm following the ridge in this direction. Very reminiscent of the, uh, the hill above Belden. Another aspect of this section of the trail. It's 
a wee bit overgrown. And that was one of the easier ones. So we're within the last half mile of the day, we think. Heading towards a campsite that is stalked by a psycho deer, according to reports. And a water source you have to bushwhack to because the trail is really overgrown. Yay! <laughs> kind of looking forward to meeting the psycho deer. Uh, and we just wasted a cheerful half hour trying to find the water source, which is really easy to find incidentally. Uh, Gatox makes it sound like there's a lot of bushwhacking, so the trail comes out. PCT comes out sort of there, so I carried on into these bushes here. There was something that looked like a trail for a bear, and then it ended up not being a trail, and I was scrambling up the hills and going through bushes as tall as myself, never hearing water, thinking, this is not right. And it's bullshit, because <laughs> you just follow the damn dirt road down. Not a grizzly peak road, but the one that you're sort of literally coming out onto. You follow it down and then there's a really short little bushwalk at the end, sort of about 10 feet down to the stream. <laughs> oh yeah, don't take Gatwick's descriptions, too, too literal. So we didn't have to wait too long for the psycho deer to make an appearance. We're still in the process of pitching the tent then. Hey presto, here she is. Hello psycho. If you eat my socks, I'll eat you. Is that the deal? Oh, you're not really a psycho, are you? So yeah, where the deer is kind of heading is the, the stream, incidentally. It's sort of down there by those trees. You want a drink? Yes, you go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ryan's trying to make friends with the deer. You want some sweeties? Don't. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> no sharing of snacks, I'm afraid, dear. You're not that dear. Not that friendly. Not too mad. Liver puddling. In his prime. So, we head up this morning at Cosk Spring in the same foul mood we had left it yesterday. Still wondering why we're actually carrying on. And um, wondering why we can't turn pages without causing problems. And we cl did a little climb to that campsite that we actually wanted to camp at yesterday originally, which was just on a little flat bit on a saddle, and um, sort of by the time we reached the road, our mood had changed again, and we were actually in reasonably good spirits. I think we were making good progress, and and then these exposed witches started, um, which were quite sandy, quite, uh, you know, I was, I was likening them to, to, to the snow traverses at one point, it just, it, yeah. They're eroding away because the soil is very, very sandy and they are quite steep, some of them. So you had to, to watch where you were going up there. But there were loads of lovely flowers coming out everywhere. And um, yeah, by the time we pulled up for water here at Moosehead Creek, we were in pretty good mental state again. Um, and this is, this is a... Uh, I mean, we, we filled up here and then there's another little opportunity to fill up there, um, but that's the last sort of reasonably on trail water for 10 miles, so just you know, be aware if you hike this, you might want to top up there. But those <coughs> 10 miles were, they were good. Undulating, reasonably gentle, and um, with a lot of nice nice views actually out to Manchester and uh, we reached a lot of open areas again. A little bit too open in places because, you know, <laughs> we like the shade when it gets too hot. Um, so we made, yeah, we made really good progress. The missed this trail junction completely, well I did, Brian 
saw the sign apparently. This would be another opportunity to get water, but it's like half a mile off the PCT. So by the time you've walked half a mile down and half a mile back up, you've added a mile to your day. And we didn't, you know, we didn't need it because we knew we, we would make it to the next water source. And, um, yeah, well, <laughs> what can I say? All very pleasant riches. Little ups, little downs. And then we got to here, Gold Creek. The sign that points into the woods, and then you go up into the woods a bit, and then you hit a dirt road, and then you have absolutely no idea where they want you to go. So the trick is to just use the dirt road. Not the one that runs sort of parallel to the PCT at that point, but the one that goes inwards. And it's just really, really, really easy getting to Gold Creek that way. So tonight we took the unusual step of uh, the approving the turn, I probably can't see it now. I've put rocks up in various places to make it harder for the deer to stick its nose underneath things. And we've hidden the spare pa pair of um, tracking poles down there. So hopefully, normally we use them to pull the sides out here and there. But um, we didn't do that tonight because, you know, we don't want the deer to be able to get near the handles. <laughs> it does have fangs and red eyes, this deer. Um, no, it has neither. It's a really cute deer. You've seen it earlier. It's just very persistent and it really the isn't going away. Deer. What? Hi guys. Hey. Week 17. The summary. Um, thing to talk about this week. Given the little hissy fits we, we pulled is the North California Blues. It's kind of a thing on the PCT where an awful lot of people get very dispirited in North California and an awful lot of people in fact quit in North California when they do it through like no idea one why because North California is actually quite beautiful. It's <laughs> quite beautiful. I think it's obviously it's, it must be something to do with the amount of mileage you've, you've walked by then and the, the length of time you've been on trail and the fact that you know you're, you're going through Northern California you're kind of hitting the halfway mark and realizing that after everything you've got to do the same thing again I think there's a lot of factors mm. that play in um, it's also obviously a section where you know after all the excitement of the desert and all the spectacularness of the Sierra not that we've experienced it all but you know where Northern California despite the fact that it's very nice very pretty just nothing, it doesn't have many like wow highlights. You kind of hike from resupply town to resupply town. There isn't an eagle rock, there isn't a, you know, a pass a day kind of thing. There, there is none of these grand nat natural features. So it becomes very much an exercise in hiking in order I'm, to get there. And I think on the average you do for the 3,000 feet a day yeah. and hike. Uh, uh, and I think it gets a bit tough because you, you expect it with the Sierras, but yeah. with Northern California you don't. But I think it's a bit harder than people it's, expect. Yeah, it's a hard section because in the Sierra you do the climbs that you do, you tend to do one big climb a day. So you're prepared for it, you're mentally prepared for it, you, you time it right to so make sure that you get up the pass at the right time, down the pass at the right time, line yourself up for the, the next pass at the right time. Northern California is constantly like that. And some of the ups are quite... Mm -mm. Yeah, the, the, the gradients are not pretty. <laughs> so a lot of it is... Um, I said, I think there's a lot of the section being, you know, being tougher than expected, being longer than expected, for many people it seems to be an issue that they're still in California. Now, to us, that's so what? I mean, it's the PCT. But the amount of people that we've met that were like, "Oh yeah, we're nearly, we're nearly done with California," and looking forward to Oregon because it's a new state, is like, "Well, it's still hiking." Yeah. But that seems to be a, a thing. Now, why we got the North California Blues, I don't know because we didn't do all of the Sierra so we're not the same level exhausted as other people at this stage but it happens it seems to catch you no matter what it's 
like they always say, you just don't quit on a bad day. And no. Northern California and is just and fine. Lucky enough, we got both each other, and it was mainly, I'd say, me who kept on moaning about quitting. <laughs> Not all the time, but every now and then. I'd just say yes, and then the next day I'd say I know. Yeah. Um, I, I always so agreed if with you, him. If you, if you if you're actually a couple, it works out well in our case a lot better because I basically I would spit out a dummy and I just rant about I hating life everything and I just go yeah yeah again yeah and then next morning I decide oh no I want to stay on it but that's life yeah I said it before you agree with Mad Men. Makes for an easier life. On the plus side, we didn't spend much money. Um, we spent this week two hundred and forty pounds. Pounds? Dollars. We're still in dollars. Two hundred and forty dollars twenty-six uh, for resupplies. That was ordered stuff. Sixty-four dollars uh, on town food. That was the meals at Bernie Guest Lounge which are well worth the money because it's an open buffet, you can go as many times mm. as you like. Uh, the accommodation was $45, again at Bernie. Um, showers $3 and postage $9.30. So altogether we spent this week $361.56. Yay!